So I wanted to just take about five minutes here and show you the new content tool that's in .cms 1.9.1.3. And this will be the recommended way for pulling and interacting with the content store uh, moving forward in .cms from this version or this patch level of 1.9.1 and also moving forward in the 192, 195, 2.0 and, and so forth. The, con the pull content macro will still be around. You can still use the get content map detail, things of this nature. But we are I, we we are recommending that people treat them as deprecated, meaning they will still work. They're still going to function as they always did. But from here forward, again, we've provided a better, more performant, and faster way, and we believe easier way of interacting with the content store. So here you go. Let's take a look. I have here test pull. It's nothing fancy. Uh, in fact, I'm not even spitting the images out or anything of this nature, just spitting out the raw data. But I want to show you what's happening here. Now, the nice thing is the syntax isn't going to look too different from what you're used to. As you can see here on my screen, we have, we're inside of a loop. And I'm saying for each con in. And then here's our new tool, the doc content tool. It's got a method on it called pull, very similar to the pull content macro. And you can see it, it takes parameters just like the pull content macro used to take. And in this case, we're spitting out the headline, spitting out, and, and as you see here, this is a list of categories. The news type on this particular structure, the news type is category. So there could be zero or many categories in here. Then we iterate over the loop. This is much nicer than what you used to get before. So you actually get the category uh, array list here, and, and then in, within here you get the actual category objects. You don't have to go back to some other tool or another way to pull those as you used to have to. Uh, image raw URI. In this case, the image is actually a binary image. One of the things that came in in .cms 1.9, and here we're saying dollar sign $con, we're inside of our loop, the content, dot .image, the name of the field, dot raw URI. And in fact, right here, you can see we're just spitting out the image. Same with the tags. You can actually iterate over them. In the past, you would just get this comma-separated string, which you would then have to split. And we, we do it for you now. This is actually a list of tags. You spit them out. Uh, and then we will also demonstrate for you, in this case, comments is actually a select box. We actually have a check box down here and a, a multi-select box as well as access to the host. So let me hit cancel here and go back and let's take a look at our output. As you can see, we spit out the headline. This was con dot headline. In this case, you can see we spit out the array list. Now, if there were multiple categories in here, you'd see them all here. One nice thing is the tool is now two stringing properly, and that means when you spit an object to the screen, as we're doing here, you you know sometimes you only get this part that I have highlighted, and you only get the kind of the memory address of the object. But now you could actually see all of the attributes that are available on that object. It helps for development. Here we're actually inside of our loop and spitting out the actual category. And then here's the press. We did in this case we had done dollar sign con dot our cat cat dot or excuse me, we were in the loop of the category. And in this case we did category dot name dot key in this case. Okay, so moving on, the binary image. Again, here's the entire object highlighted right now, spit out, and you can see there's lots of data you can get, the size and the name, the raw URI, the resize URI, the thumbnail URI, and there's some helper methods on this to get at, at data here, and here you can see I'm actually just spitting out the raw URI. It could easily be used inside of an image source tag. Also here, the tags. Again, the list of all the tags, iterating over them much easier. This is kind of nice. Something that we do now with comments, or, or excuse me, not with the comments, is a multi, is, or excuse me, is a select field. But there's also a multi-select field and a radio button, radio fields, there's checkbox fields on the structure. And in this case, you now have option two. You have access to the options. You also have access to the values. Now, these are parallel arrays meaning these are the potential options and potential values. You don't have to hard code these if you're trying to match the potential values in, say, a search form or something of that nature. And then you actually see the selected value. For a multi-select, the select value is, is a list. Obviously, in the case of a radio button or in the case of a select where you can only have one option, it's only 
it's just a string and one single guy spit out. Uh, we have the host here and it actually spits out the full content map of the host. The object that actually is returned to you when you do a pull is you get a list of content maps and that's it's kind of like a wrapper object that sits around the content. So let me show you another example of something you could do. Here we have some code that's fine. You're doing a dot content dot find and in this case you can pass the identifier or the inode. In my example here I'm actually pulling the same piece of content. It's just I pass the inode in one case and the identifier in another case. And if we were to go down and look at our example you could see the find by identifier here and he's pulling this content 3B474 and if you scroll down here, 3B474, it's the same guy. One was pulled by the inode, one was pulled by the identifier. So this would be in, in place of the get, content map, the get content map macro or get content map by identifier or any of those macros. Okay, documentation. So I want to give you guys just an access. What else can I do with the tool? If you go to .cms.com and you check out the one nine docs, do a search for content space handling in the doc. You'll you'll be able to find the page that has this, and it gives an example of how to use this guy. In addition, there's a link here for Java docs, which is going to take you here, and this takes you right to the package of where these are. And here's the content tool. This is the actual view tool, and it shows you the methods that are available. And you have the find method, as we explained. You have the pull, which is just like a pull content. You have ability to pull paginated, pull related, and to query. The difference between the query and the pull is the query can ret will return to a list of objects, these content search objects that have nothing but inodes and identifiers on them. Just two strings. So they're very light. It's the quickest way to search. If you don't need to actually display data, if you just need to check, hey, does this query return any results? You could make do this guy do a dot size greater than zero, and it's going to be the most performant way. You can iterate over this tons and tons of times without suffering performance hits, as the pull content macro had much, much heavier uh, load on, on top of it. If you click on these methods, you'll notice we also have examples down here. What do these parameters mean? So this, this tool is well docked, as well as the content map, which of which it returns and you can see it's docked here and if you click on the get again there's there's good dock within within these methods i hope this this is just a brief example of what the new tool does and how to use it just wanted to give some of you guys that haven't seen it yet uh, some insight into what's coming here something to be excited about as uh, amongst other things uh, moving forward with dot cms